Welcome to Small Business, Big Outcomes, a weekly podcast by Business SA, South Australia's Chamber of Commerce and Industry. I'm Martin Hazy, and today is Thursday, the 4th of March, 2021. Last week, our Business SA William Buck Survey of Business Expectations was released, finding that business confidence in South Australia jumped up to 108.3 points, and that's 13 points up from the September quarter. And we've been doing this quarterly for almost 40 years. Today, I'm joined by Andrew McKenna, our Director of Policy and Advocacy, to chat about this. Hi, Martin. Andrew, great to have you with us. To put it simply, what does it mean when the result from the last quarter was 108.3 points or it was up 13 points on the previous survey? Lay it out for us. Well, good question, Martin. Um, What we need to do when we're looking at a survey like this is have some sort of benchmark that we compare to quarter by quarter and we use an index. So essentially we've got a formula where we're dividing responses of how many businesses were confident versus you know, less confident about the current state of the South Australian economy. So when we say 108.3 points, what we mean is that there are more than half the businesses being more confident about the economy than the ones who are less confident. So that that's essentially positive territory. That's really good. We haven't been there for a couple of years. So we're, we're actually 20% above our 10-year average for business confidence. I must say that's extraordinary and a big shout out and well done to South Australia. Andrew, share with us the difference between, you've just mentioned business confidence, but SOBE, the Survey of Business Expectations, actually surveys two things. It also surveys business conditions. What's the difference? Well, it's a really um, key difference because confidence is about the broader economy. So a business might be confident about the broader economy, but then there may be specific competition aspects related to their business or their industry um, that may be quite different. So business conditions is very much about, you know, the conditions for your business specifically as opposed to what you're experiencing in the broader economy. But what we saw in the December quarter was business conditions rose quite substantially too, up five points to 100.6 index points. So again, in the main, more businesses are doing better than those those faring worse. So this is a really good result and about a two-year high on our index. Andrew, I think everybody would be, would be really interested to know that is this what you expected as a result? Because if we cast our mind back to only November last year, and that wasn't that long ago, is that, of course, for a number of days, South Australia was effectively shut down due to the Parafield, Parafield COVID cluster. Is this the result you expected for the December quarter? Not really. Um, we did expect a, a more significant impact from the Parafield cluster. In fact, when we looked at the expectations from last quarter, which were measured in early October, we expected to get to 99.5 index points for business conditions in the December quarter. We got just over 100. So we've actually exceeded expectations and we've also had the Parafield cluster. So what that tells us is that generally speaking, the economy is doing really well. However, there is still quite a significant cohort of businesses that are much worse off and those tend to be in hospitality or exposed to international tourism or events where the ongoing social distancing and border closures are still having a very real impact. Andrew, the labour market. So we're all reading in the press articles with regards to sometimes South Australia seems to have the highest unemployment rate in the nation and then that might be followed by the exact opposite result and it looks like we're doing very well with comparative low unemployment. Um, Explain to us why that happens and your observations about the labour market in South Australia. Well, unfortunately, in some respects, South Australia being a relatively small state, a lot of the key statistical indicators that come out from the ABS do tend to fluctuate a lot, either month to month or quarter to quarter. And labour force is usually a good example of that. So whereby the whole country may only shift quite slightly, um, South Australia tends to, to move around quite a bit, but we do tend to focus on the trend. We know from the XOB that over a third of businesses found it harder to get labour in the December quarter. And anecdotally, we know that skill shortages are a significant challenge across the whole state economy and particularly in regional South Australia. 
So in the main, there is a significant amount of jobs or there are a significant amount of jobs available, but we are also in a period where there has been a lot of people impacted in those heavily hit sectors from the ongoing restrictions who are still looking for work. So it could be a lot worse. Most of the feedback from businesses is though that they are struggling to find people. So that's probably not a bad problem to have in some respects. And if we cast our mind back to probably about 12 months ago when the survey of business expectations hit all-time lows in terms of business confidence and business conditions, now we're back. We're back to 108.3 points. Um, What does this mean? I mean, has the global pandemic actually helped some businesses in South Australia? Well, I think some businesses have actually taken stock and looked at exactly everything they do and looked at are they in the right markets? Are they as efficient as they possibly can be? Quite a few businesses have found that they've actually been benefited from COVID. They've become a lot more efficient. They've reduced waste. They've repositioned themselves. They've found new markets, whether they be online or otherwise. So it hasn't been all bad. Um, There's no doubt that businesses who are still currently restricted are in a different camp but in the main it has given businesses a lot of opportunity and when we look at the regions particularly from a tourism perspective a lot of those regional areas have benefited quite substantially from the border closures. What about the whole work from home phenomena? Uh, Business SA of course you know we represent 17 industry sectors We've got members, clients and stakeholders around literally every part of South Australia. Um, The whole work from home phenomena, what does that mean to businesses and what's that mean to the economy? Well, things have evolved over COVID. We we went through a period where the majority of people were working from home in, in the instances where they can work from home. As things have moved on and if we take out the Parafield cluster and, and a surrounding period, We have seen generally things get back to somewhat of a normality. Having said that, there is still quite a proportion of businesses that have some working from home type arrangements. Now, they might be the 25% of businesses who have their staff working between the office and home or the 11% that have staff working regularly from home. But it's at least a third of businesses that are in that situation. So we have seen what could be a structural shift in how people work. We've noticed that in public transport numbers that are still down around 30% and and even more when you look at some of the numbers going to and from the Adelaide CBD. So there has definitely been changes. How long they will last is still debatable at this point in time. But for a lot of businesses, particularly larger businesses and governments, there is quite a lot more flexibility about working from home and there does tend to be a preference for a lot of employees to work from home even if it is just one or two days a week. Andrew, one last question. Does change bring about opportunity? Change always brings about opportunity. And I think what we find is that the best businesses always survive and thrive through a crisis. One aspect of the positive impact of COVID has been a refocus on local manufacturing. Now, there has been a lot of talk about this from the early on in the pandemic period, and clearly there have been moves by government to subsidise manufacture of certain medical products and goods and services. But now we're starting to hear that a lot more companies are actually genuinely looking at more long-term plays that involve manufacturing more onshore to de-risk their supply chains. And that's also related to other issues that we've had during the period, for example, with relation to Chinese tariff challenges. So there are significant opportunities, particularly for South Australia to build on its manufacturing past and to ensure that we have a more diversified and sustainable economy going into the future. You know, the wonderful thing about that is that I don't think I've yet met a South Australian who does not support a resurgence of local manufacturing. It seems to have such widespread and deep support. Andrew, thank you very much. This is all the time we've got today. Um, This has been a really instructive conversation. And everyone, the report, the Survey of Business Expectations December quarter report is available for you on our website. Next week, uh, we'll be back with our second edition of our podcast. And we'd love to interact with you and love you to interact with us. So if you have a question or a topic you'd like us to explore together, 
send us a message by visiting business-sa.com forward slash podcast. Look forward to chatting with you again next Thursday. Bye for now.